the NFL's divisional weekend as one of the most exciting on the sports betting calendar and we've spent all compiling the best betting notes, trends and prop picks all week, giving you insights with an edge to help you win your bets in the second round of the NFL playoffs. Teasing the day away we begin today much like our good friend Joe Fordenbaugh kicks off the Sharp 600 podcast and that's with a six-point teaser, though we're going in a different direction than he did this week. Underdogs were the theme of the week last week, going 4-0 ATS. Historically, underdogs have also been the theme of the second weekend of the NFL playoffs as home favorites during the divisional round are just 2-1-3-5-1 against the spread over the last 15 seasons. We're banking on the underdogs keeping things somewhat close in both games today. For the first play of the teaser, we're moving the Colts from 5-11. to Why? The Colts are one of the hottest teams in football, winning 10 of their last 11, KC hasn't won a home playoff game since 1994, and Andy Reid is 1-4 in the playoffs with the Chiefs. Andrew Luck will keep this one close. For the second half of the play, we're teasing the Cowboys from 7-13. Why? The Rams haven't been the same team of late, going 3-2 down the stretch with wins over lowly Detroit, Arizona, and San Francisco. They also have zero covers in their last seven against teams with winning records, and Dallas is going to do all it can to dominate time of possession, something the Cowboys have done very well this season, see Jason Logan's underdogs column for more. Ezekiel Elliott will keep this one close. Colts vs Chiefs minus 5, 56.5, running luck. Last week, we talked about how quarterbacks who have the ability to take off and gain yards will be more willing to run in a must-win. We saw it and got a winner with Deshaun Watson's 76 rushing yards on 8 attempts, though Mitch Trubisky came up short of his total by running for just 9 yards on 3 attempts, though perhaps the Bears would still be playing had he used his legs for a few first downs. It comes to Andrew Luck, taking off from the pocket is not something that comes to mind, but check out his rushings totals over the past few weeks, all of which have been must wins for Indy, week 14 to 6 carries, 16. Yards week 15 to 6 carries, 20 yards week 16 to 2 carries, 13 yards week 17 to 7 carries, 17 yards wild card, 8 carries, 29 yards that's right, Andrew Luck has averaged 5.8 carries per game over his last 5 games. Luck has been doing whatever it takes to win and that has meant scrambling for first downs. We're expecting more of the same this afternoon, especially in a game where offense should be flowing with a game total 56.5. Luckily for us, unintended, his rushing yards total is set at a very achievable 16.5 yards and we're taking the over. Backfield questions in KC Spencer Ware, hamstring, is questionable for Saturday, though he seems likely to suit up after having the bye as an extra week to rest his injured hamstring. Ware actually hasn't played since week 14, allowing Damian Williams to emerge and shine as the Chiefs' top back. It's tough to say how Ware will be used on Sunday. He was supposed to take over feature back duties after Kareem Hunt's release, but Williams looked like a star in weeks 15 and 16, posting over 100 yards from scrimmage against the Chargers and Seahawks before having his snap styled back in week 17's blowout of Oakland. Even if Ware is active, it's hard to imagine he eats too many of Williams' snaps on Saturday as he was already starting to take over lead back duties when both were healthy. Ware played 49 snaps to Williams' 19 when both were healthy in Week 13, but the following week it was Williams who held a 43-41 edge in snaps. It will be a tough rushing matchup against Indianapolis as defense that ranked 4th in rushing DVOA, but we envision Williams getting into the end zone, something he did 6 times between weeks 13-17. to We're backing him to score a touchdown at any time. No questions for Kelsey earlier in the week, we talked about how Sammy Watkins might be in tough against a Colts defense that is very tough on wide receivers. The catch, however, is that Indianapolis is soft against tight ends. 
We brought this to light last week in backing Ryan Griffin and he would have hit his overhead to Sean Watson not overthrown him when he was wide open for a long touchdown, but we're not bitter. Indy gave up the most catches, 6.3, and yards, 63, to tight ends during the regular season and ranked 29th in DVOA to the position, allowing an average of 7.9 passes and 76.2 yards. Nothing really needs to be said about Travis Kelsey, he's one of the top tight ends in football and averaged 6.4 catches for 83.5 yards per game. He's in a great spot for a huge day on Saturday and we're backing the over 84.5 on his receiving yards total. Colts receiver T.Y. Hilton was held out of practice on Tuesday with the same ankle issue that has been bothering him for the better part of a month. This should come as no surprise to anyone who has been following Hilton closely this season. Hilton's weekly routine has been to not practice early in the week, get in a limited session late in the week, and then go out and dominate on game day. The good news is that Hilton did not suffer a setback on Wild Card Weekend. Expect him to suit up on Saturday at Kansas City assuming no further injury in practice this week. Hilton will have a shot at a monster day on Sunday against the Chiefs' 26th-ranked defense in overall DVOA. The Chiefs do possess a better pass defense 12th in passing DVOA than rush defense 32nd in rushing DVOA, but Saturday's game has the making of a shootout with Andrew Luck and Patrick Mahomes potentially going back and forth all afternoon in a game that has a total of 57. We'll be looking to back the over on Hilton's receiving yards total as soon as the prop markets open. Watkins Limited Chiefs receiver Sammy Watkins returned to practice for the first time in a month on Tuesday but was labeled as limited. Watkins hasn't played since getting on the field for a few snaps in Week 11 and hasn't contributed since Week 9. He is trending to be a game-time decision for Saturday's game against Indianapolis. Watkins was having an inconsistent season before getting hurt, with four games of 74-plus receiving yards and three games with 21 yards or less. If he does return on Saturday, it might seem like a decent matchup because of the game total of 57, by far the highest total of the week but remember that the Colts are very tough on wide receivers. Here's what we wrote last week, the Colts defense allows just 44.5% of an opponent's completed passes to go to wide receivers. That's the lowest rate in the league. They allowed the fewest receptions in the league to wide receivers, 166, and the second fewest receiving yards to wide receivers, 1,953. Unsurprisingly, they're also tough against WR ones, allowing just 6.7 passes for 59.9 yards per game. The Colts then went out and allowed just 5 receptions for 37 yards to DeAndre Hopkins, although it should be noted that Hopkins reportedly played hurt and that Kiki Kuti did post 11 receptions for 110 yards. Still, if Watkins returns he will be at less than 100% and presumably Rossi after missing close to 2 months of action. We'll be looking to fade him in a tough matchup if he's active on Saturday. Another Mack attack? Marlon Mack faced a very tough matchup against Houston's top-ranked defense in rushing DVOA and proceeded to go off for 148 yards and a touchdown on 24 carries. We'd like to say we saw it coming, but we didn't. We did get a winner in backing Mack to score a touchdown at any time, but we thought he'd have a hard time reaching his rushing yards total of 49.5 against the stout Houston front seven. On paper, this week's matchup is much juicier for Mack as the Colts take on the Chiefs who ranked dead last in the league in rushing DVOA. The Chiefs allowed 132.1 rushing yards per game, 27th in the NFL, on 5 yards per carry, 31st in the league. Indianapolis should come out with a run-heavy approach on Saturday in hopes of keeping Patrick Mahomes off the field, much like Seattle did when it gave Chris Carson 27 carries in its Week 16 upset of KC. We're taking the over on max rushing yards total for the divisional round. Cowboys vs Rams minus 7, 49.5 Staying off Goff Rams quarterback Jared Goff seemed to hit a bit of a wall towards the end of 2018. 
in 5 December starts, Goff averaged just 228.2 passing yards, cracking the 220-yard mark just once, and that was when he threw for 339 yards when the Rams were chasing the Eagles all night in Week 15. that same stretch, he completed just 58.6% of his passes for 6.3 yards per attempt. Yes, Goff is much better at home than on the road, averaging 342.1 passing yards in the LA Coliseum, but that number got inflated by epic shootouts against Casey, 413 passing yards, and Minnesota, 465 passing yards. We see this game going one of two ways, neither of which is a shootout, either Dallas keeps it close by leaning on Ezekiel Elliott and dominating time of possession, once again, see Jason Logan's underdogs column, or LA gets up big and runs away with it, as the Cowboys simply aren't built to chase points. In scenario 1, Goff isn't on the field enough to reach his passing yards total of 282.5. In scenario 2, Goff likely puts up yardage early before Todd Gurley takes over as the Rams nurse a big lead. We're backing the under on Goff's passing yards total. Can LA stop Zeke? If you've been reading this article, you can probably tell that we expect Ezekiel Elliott to play a huge role in Dallas offense Saturday night, which isn't to say he hasn't of late. Since the Cowboys buy in Week 8, Elliott is averaging a whopping 29.7 touches, and that includes last week's dominating 30-touch, 169-yard performance against Seattle. The Rams are very bad at defending the run with a rank of 28th in rushing DVOA while giving up 122.3 rushing yards per game, 10th most in the NFL, on 5.1 yards per carry, most in the NFL. Early season defensive injuries can't be blamed for IA's rushing defense woes either as the Rams gave up 111 yards on 16 carries to Alfred Morris the last time they were on the field in Week 17. Dallas' only real shot at pulling off an upset is by letting Elliott control the game and he's in store for a monster workload in a plus matchup. Take the over 132.5 on his combined rushing and receiving yards total as we look to get a winner out of Zeke for the second week in a row. McVay talks Gurley Sean McVay talked about Todd Gurley and his knee injury on Thursday after practice. He looks like Todd, McVay told reporters. He looks like the explosive, great back we're used to. Gurley was also removed from the injury report altogether as it appears he'll be at full speed on Sunday against the Cowboys. Earlier in the week, we suggested backing Gurley's under as we didn't think he'd be at 100% and Dallas has the fifth-ranked defense in rushing BVOA. However, we're going to flip here and look towards backing the over on Gurley's rushing total. Full credit goes to Cover's Twitter follower at Gorky Garcia who pointed out that Dallas rush defense is not nearly as tough on the road as it is at home. In fact, Dallas allowed 422 rushing yards and 4 touchdowns 84 carries for 5.02 yards per carry in its last 4 road games. Game script is also in Gurley's favor as a 7-point home favorite. Gurley's prop markets aren't open yet, likely due to the early week concerns over his knee, but we'll be backing the over on his rushing yards total once it is listed. Want more free NFL picks? See what our covers experts have to offer.